Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, so today we wanted to draw animals. Was that it? Dogs and cats? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, how lovely, Ruth. Very nice. So let's try drawing the cartoon ones first and then we can draw realistic also. Cats and dogs. All right. Okay, so all our cartoon or even real life illust or realistic illustrations, everything starts with making um, a stick figure often or just a basic uh, drawing of that animal. So suppose we have, oh, one second. I'm going to use a real cat for reference. Because it's good to see a real animal and then try and figure out how to draw it always. There's only so much that we can imagine, right? So let me share this with you. Okay, so here we have a cute little cat. And if we were to convert this into basic shapes, what kind of shapes would we get? We would um, get um, yeah. circles, squares, okay. and like rectangles. Very good. Do you want to make a rough sketch with this, with just basic shapes? Whatever you see, it doesn't have to be the same. And it it can be um, just with lines also. So I can see that circle underneath that about the same width of a rectangle. And then I could almost see an oval over here, a part of an oval, not going all the way there. And then there are these triangles. Right. So let's try drawing this. Already we have a shape of a cat ready. Remember to shave off our oval, make one oval from this side, that's this small, and then another, another oval from this side, that's slightly larger. Can we do that? Um, did you? Yeah. Do we have to draw this in rough or do we have to draw it in fair? No, now today, right now, everything is going to be on the same page. Okay. And uh, later on, if you if we do land up doing anything fair, we'll do it on a separate page. So right now, we will make a basic uh, basic shapes of the cat as one picture and then convert that into a cartoon. All right. Okay, so I'm going to add that screenshot to our group. Okay, now again over here, there's a lot of proportions. So you have almost a circular oval shape 
then you have a rectangle and try to see how big that rectangle is in proportion to the circle we've made. So it's almost one, two, three, four times longer than the height of the head. Then you of course have the ears pretty much the same. And then from about half this distance, still just about above here, you have one oval. And then from here, you have another oval. And then of course you have the tail, which comes around like this, rolls in, and then does this. So already we start getting some shapes. Now in this rectangle, if you look at the image, you will see that the paws are also ovals. And then you have two lines on the inside come like this. And then from the neck, you have two lines coming outward like this. You have two paws for the back legs in the back over here. And then you can make these stripes. Now for the face, we can make simplified faces. So you make a triangle pointing downwards. And then bring one line down. Don't make too many things. And for the eyes, just make a couple of dots. See, now can we try and make this one more time on the side? And this time we can change the proportions. So how about, let's make a big head, an oval. From the sides you get her legs in and make paws. So I've just made it a shorter, pudgier gap. And we could make very big, this is going to look like a civet cat actually, or even a bat. And then the tail can come all the way here, become bushier. I think I'm going to reduce the ear shape. Just much, this much is enough. Now we can also make some stripes on its face. Just so that it does not look too weird, I'm going to erase these ears now. Two lines on the paws. Okay, now do you want to make your next one? Yeah. 
let's see, I'm looking for a nice pose. You want to try making this one? So here the cat's face is slightly sideways. What if we try making these shapes? You have an oval shape for the face, right? Now, you may not have a regular shape for the body, but you have an S shape like this. Then you can have circle for the, or an oval, oh, too big. I'll make for a very fat cat. Circle somewhere here. Then you have legs, body, and these legs are also pretty okay, they're L-shaped. And the tail is hidden behind, but you can always get the tail out like that. Yeah? Do you want to try making this cat? So first draw the basic shape to ascertain the proportion. So look at where the neck of the cat starts. It's not at the top, it's in the middle of the oval. How far does it go? Then you have that circle. Almost in the middle of the circle, you have one L, other L. Okay, this is the shape we have. How do we convert this? Same shape again. And it's all about getting the right lines, angles, proportions. So now in this case, you have the paws go forward like that from two sides. Then you have the body go up this way. I think my body can go even higher. And then you have the legs coming like this. They're pretty close to the stomach. Right? And then we have one ear that is foreshortened. Foreshortened is when you take something flat and you put it at an angle so you know that the flat is still flat but facing in an opposite, in another direction. So it becomes slightly shorter. This is foreshortening. See, my hand is actually big. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to shrink my hand. So when I turn it to, into an angle, it becomes smaller in width. See, right now it's this big, but the view becomes smaller. This is called foreshortening. So this here on the far side is foreshortened. This here is clearly visible. But now to make this foreshortening look even better, we will put that triangle nose somewhere over here on the side. Put the mouth somewhere like this. 
and give it flat eyes because have you seen a cat uh, stretch itself? It usually is very relaxed. So it does not have big open eyes like this one. And then here again, you can give either stripes or spots. And of course, whiskers. Okay, now let's try dogs. Hmm. For some uh, reason, my reference images are not loading. I don't know what's going on. Okay, while that loads, how about we try different kinds of shapes for cat faces? And so we're doing cats. What if we have a square cat face? What will happen? The ears can remain like triangles. And we can still have the same kind of striping. What if in this case, since we have this whole rectangle, what if we do the head and body in the same, don't don't change it at all. So what if we have almost a shape like that for a cat? Does this work? Or this fellow can come down. Ah, oh, this would be better. Hi, 
Sorry, my uh, Wi-Fi just dropped suddenly. Uh, mom, the the drawing that you've done of the cat, uh -huh. it, looks, it looks a lot like a dog. It does look like a dog, no? Yeah. How does it look? Why do you think it looks like a dog? The facial features, the, the small little smile, I think, is what makes it look like a dog. If you add whiskers and like uh, the markings to it, it look like a cat. Mm, that is true. Okay, let's try changing this to a dog then. So I don't have to really do too much. I just do this. Maybe I can, I can do this. See, this might change it more to a dog. Okay, now how about let's try it with dogs. Now if we were to draw this dog, maybe we can take another page. Here, what are the shapes? This might be easy enough to draw even without shapes. There's a rectangle for the face, uh -huh. two triangles, and then rectangle also for the neck. It's That's mostly right. rectangles. It's mostly rectangles, so you're right. So you have the face, the rectangle for the neck. The face has two parts. There's a top part where the eyes are and the snout and mouth are in one part. Just making these shapes also can be so much fun. So let me try and draw these for you. I know you must have got these by now. So... How about this whole thing becomes a rectangle? Something like this perhaps. And then from here you get proportions of how far the years go. It's much easier to do this on the screen the way I'm doing it, but it's a little difficult when you are just looking at an image and even more difficult when you have a real dog in front of you. Do any of you have a dog? I've been trying to get one for 11 years, but no. No? 11 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Typical. Oh, the parents know that once they get a dog, they only have to look after the dogs. Okay, so here's my dog shape. I'm going to draw this one more time and now try to illustrate the shapes. Now for this particular dog, we can make easy shapes. I'm going to draw this in pen. Oh, let me spotlight. So here you have 
one shape like, like this. Coming down until at this level, then I turn it in. Its mouth seems to be touching the top. Its tongue tea seems to be touching the top. Draw a few zigzag zigzag teeth because this is supposed to be a very menacing dog. I always like to put a nice collar around my dogs. And then the front, we can draw in here like that. And pull the head down like this. And the other ear can just be a triangle facing that side. This is the snout. And again, the eyes can just be little triangles like this. And though dogs have don't have very prominent whiskers like cat, they do have whiskers. You can draw a little highlight on the nose and shade the nose. And then you can draw hair like this, a fur. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, my my uh this Wi-Fi my entire house is blacked out for a second. So. Oh God. Okay. So yeah. how do you log on now? No, no. The power came back, so I just uh quickly connected oh. the Wi-Fi. Okay, okay, okay. Same things happening at my place also. I think it was just a flash. How are you guys doing? How are your dogs and cats looking? Shall we make another one? One sec, ma'am. I'm still uh, working on the fur. Okay, all right.
Oh, my one complete. Done? Okay. All right. Okay, let me share another image with you. Shall we try this one? Now this one, you could also try making a slightly realistic illustration. Let me show you. Now we'll move from the, I just want you to observe this. Maybe this one, uh, maybe I'll look for a different one. Wait, I like this one better. Show you the image first, then you know what to expect. Yeah, this is a cuter one. So in this case, again, it's about proportions. It's about getting the right shape in the right place. We could make it like a cartoon or we could make it like a realistic dog also. So I just want you to see how I do this. So everything starts off first with a basic sketch. So I will first make what I see as a circle, a rectangle, a nose, two eyes here, and triangle ears. Okay, now I'm going to make this slightly bigger. With rectangles, you have to understand proportions. They're not like squares. And as I'm building this, I will also draw in some basic shapes. Now see how my lines will change according to the shape that I see. Now for the eyes, we can either draw two dots or we can try making this shape now. First draw the outside, then draw an oval on the inside. Then draw the highlight and then color it in. And then you can draw some of the fur to show its color transformation. This part which is white, we will just draw like this. And we can play a lot of, pay a lot of importance to the nose because it's right there in the front of their faces. Always remember to note the highlight. Then you have the nostrils, which are pretty dark. Then you have the rest of the nose. The nose of the dog is gives it a lot of personality. Then you have a little bit of shading. Oh, the highlight is gone. And all these places you can put fur like that.
Okay, do you want to draw your own dogs now? Shall I share the image? And you want to try this? So this is now moving towards a more realistic looking dog. I'm going to share screen so you can watch the dog. And then draw it. Are you getting it? Okay, let me just try this. I'm going to share both of these together. Uh -huh. Are you able to see both images? The dog and my drawing book? No? Okay. I don't know how to show you this. Nope, it's still not visible. Okay. So which one do you want to see? This one, or you want to see the reference dog? Arjun, your uh, dog avatar, I can't tell anything. <laughs> oh, not Arjun, Veer. <laughs> ah, thank you. Now I can recognize your face. Let's see, Veer. Nice, nice. Let's see your other dogs and cats. Okay.
Now, if we want to paint these, we can also paint some really cute cats and dogs. Do you want to try it? In most cases, if you want to paint, this is, you can often just paint the shape and uh, when the animal emerges in that. So, let's try. Suppose I take this a yellow ochre color. It's good to have the reference image in front, but suppose you want to draw this very cat. You can just make a shape, the same shape, in a slightly light color. And you know how cats' colors are all different. They're not an even color. Probably have a red cat if you want. Just make the same shapes that he did. And these you can actually make as silhouettes. So you draw the shape like how you've made. Just color the whole thing. Oh, um, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, I don't have enough space for that. Like, I, okay. I, I'll be able to draw one or two of them. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So this is called a silhouette. This is when you just draw the outline shape and color it up. Yeah. Now we wait for this to dry. Or if you want to, you can also add some color into this wet on wet so it'll look like some of the patches that cats have don't let the paint be too wet otherwise those colors will merge This also starts looking a lot like fur.
uh, ma'am. Yeah. The power, uh, the power cut off again. Again, na? No problem. Yeah. Don't do anything. I'll leave it away. I just started making one more um, cat silhouette like this one. I want a fat neck. And pause. Tail that comes. This maybe short, maybe short ears. I guess this much is fine. I think this fellow is dried. I'm taking a pen. No, my pen is not working on this yet. That means it must be wet. Okay, now I want you to see, this is how uh, artists practice drawing cats and dogs. So either you have a cat in front of you or you take pictures of a cat and learn its movements like these. See, you don't draw too much of the nose and mouth. Or even a stick figure form like that. See? Then there's a form like this. Again, like us, but a little more evolved. The shape of the body. Break it down into circles and uh, maybe rectangles or rhombus. And then finally, you can make it develop like this. 
where you draw fur and features. Ma'am? Yeah. Uh, today is actually my father's birthday. Oh. So, uh, I, I spent a little time uh, making these little candy packets for him. Oh, wait a minute. Let me have a look. Oh, how cute. Okay. And then Lovely. Inside, uh, there are like four of them. Inside each one, there's a uh, note and letter. That's uh, sweet. So, yeah, I just wanted to show. Wonderful. So, yes. Yeah. They're all four at the same time? No, no, no. Uh, one's blue, one's green, and uh, one's like pink. Very nice. Yeah. So. Good, good. Good job. So these these are different kinds of candies you you're giving him. No no no, no. It, it was just uh like I put in like notes and stuff. Okay okay yeah no. okay, very cool. You can do more design on that. Yeah yeah, but I did I had a limited amount of time, so I had to just. I had to. Oh, you didn't you you didn't think of this early in time. No no, I like. My mom reminded me a while, like a while ago. Oh, and I started thinking of it, and then this came to my head uh, very recently, and I just made it. Okay, you know what you can do now, but uh, uh, put put this on a calendar somewhere. Maybe uh, usually put it on the inside of your cupboard where other people will not look at it. A constant reminder: a month ahead, two weeks ahead, a week ahead of whoever's birthday in the family it is. So that you can think about what you want to get for them for their birthdays. It's all, it always works. Otherwise, it's always last minute that, oh my God, somebody is, or someone's coming over, or you want to give them a gift, or you're going to somebody's place. So you should have these reminders. Oh, as much as I'm telling you this, I also don't do this. My gifts are also last minute. <laughs> but I wish I was more organized. Okay, let's see how our cats have dried. I think this fellow is dried. Yeah, I'm going to put a little nose. And maybe a smile also. It's so relaxed. Wow. That is a beautiful dog. Lovely color. I love it. Very nice. Very nice. You guys have done a great job. Okay, now this fellow, I'm going to make a big nose, small mouth, tiny eyes. And here, maybe I could also make the paws. This fellow also can have a biggish nose. Like I often put texture in my cat's noses. And here you can have fun with maybe texturing the animal instead of Making it realistic. Okay. There. All right. What shall we do next week? Do you want to continue with this? Do you want to make a realistic dog? Do you want to make something else? So I'll write it down. 
wait what is next week today is the 22nd oh next week we'll take uh an off because it's the fifth monday and um i'm i'm gonna take some time off for holidays so monday class we won't have on the 29th so we'll have a class now on the 5th of june do you have any thoughts on what you want to make yeah ma'am i won't be there on the 5th of june i'm actually traveling to japan okay okay <laughs> how about you ruth uh, i'll i'll be uh, i'm i'm already in my hol my holiday in my native place okay so, can we draw angels for on 5th june angels angels 5th june i think is also earth day if i'm not mistaken maybe we can draw something for earth day could we draw mother earth a, a girl with a green and blue who is asking save us okay all right okay so have a nice time in japan veer and i'll catch you on the 5th of june bye ruth thank you teacher bye